Adjusting the valve clearance on these older bikes like the 74 Honda CB750 project motor is becoming a lost art. But if your passion is the older motorcycle, this is a skill you're going to have to learn if you want to work on it yourself. And we're going to show you how in this edition of SBTV How To. Okay, the engine that we're using for today's video is out of a 1974 CB750 Honda K, uh, inline four, uh, single overhead cam, uh, one valve per cylinder. Uh, very simple design, very simple to work on. A uh, good one to get your teeth cut in if you like working on the older bikes. Now, a lot of the bikes in this era, era use the same valve adjustment method that this one does. It's called a screw type adjustment. And what that means is there's an adjusting screw in the end of the rocker arm just above the valve, uh, valve stem and the clearance is set by adjusting that screw in or out uh, to set a gap, if you will, between the end of the screw and the tip of the valve. Uh, to do that you need to use a feeler gauge like these. But the feeler gauge has its name for a reason because you have to be familiar with what the feel is, what the drag is when you are indeed measuring the clearance specified by that particular gauge. Uh, it's very easy to uh, set it too tight, too loose, think you got it right. If you really want to develop the feel, get yourself a micrometer, zero that mic, and then set it uh, and lock it in place for the feeler strip that you want to practice on, say a 3000s for example. And then stick the 3000s feeler gauge in that gap. That's the feel you're going to try to mimic on the motor. Um, other motors, later model uh, designs, used a shim type system. Uh, that adjustment shim uh, rode in a bucket that set over top of the valve uh, in spring assembly, and then the cam rode directly on that shim. Uh, so it took the rocker arms out of the equation that, that saves some weight and allows some higher RPMs to be built. Those shims can be located either on top of that bucket or underneath that bucket. But measuring the clearance is still the same. You still have to have the feel so you know what the clearance is so that you can properly select the replacement shim that you're going to need. So we're going to practice on the CB750 here. I'm going to show you how the procedure is done, how to set the motor up for valve adjustment, and, uh, and show you how to adjust the valves. And we're not going to do every single one of them, uh, just to point out, uh, point out the things that you really need to know so that you can go tackle this project on your own. All right, let's get started. Okay, to begin this project, we're going to take a 17 millimeter wrench in this uh, single overhead cam 750. We're going to remove the, all the valve uh, adjustment covers and we'll set those off to the side. I want you to note here that in the 750 there's a rubber seal inside there. So if you're working on an older motor and you're not sure about the quality of that, now's a good time to replace those. Help prevent oil seepage from messing up the appearance of your motor. Okay. Okay. I also have the spark plugs removed so that we can uh, turn the engine through a little easier. Now we have to set the engine in uh, proper position for adjusting the valves. Uh, two ways you can do that: you can go by the factory procedure, uh, which sets number one and number four at top to center compression, uh, which I'll show you that in a second or you can do each cylinder one at a time. Um, we're going to use the factory method for our video and to start off let me see if I can home in and I'll demonstrate how we get number one compression. Okay of course now they are measured left to right as one two three four and what we're homing in here is the intake valve for the number one cylinder and then I'm going to come down here on the crankshaft and I'm going to rotate the engine through and watch that valve. Okay, there it starts to go down, which means the intake is opening. That's on the intake stroke. Now the piston's moving downward, and that's sucking in, or would on a running engine, that would be sucking in the uh, air fuel charge through the carburetors. Once we get all the way to the bottom, that valve's going to start to close. And now the piston's coming up on the compression stroke. So once I see that valve starting to close again, I'm going to shift my attention to the timing marks. Uh, on the end of the crankshaft. 
Okay, now what you're looking at is a really close up view of the uh, ignition cam and, and spark advance mechanism uh, where the timing marks are located here on this Honda. What you're looking at here is you see the T represents top dead center, F is our uh, ignition timing mark, which we're going to cover when we do the uh, point timing segment. Um, and the 2.3 means these are the, these are the marks for the center cylinders, number two and number three. Um, the cast mark here, that is the reference mark on the bl block uh, that lets us know what to line up with. So now that that intake valve is on its way up, I'm going to keep slowly rotating this through, and I'm looking for the T mark for, you guessed it, 1.4, cylinders 1 and 4. Okay, now that's coming up. And we're going to slowly bring that up until that T aligns with the mark right there. Okay, now we're on top dead center compression for number one. There should be, uh, should be four valves that I can go ahead now and adjust the clearance on. Okay, now with the piston set at top dead center should be the compression stroke for number one. If that's true, there should be no tension on either valve, so we'll just go and check that. Yep, they're both loose. So that's in the right place. I can do number one. Cylinder number two um, should be, uh, one of the two valves should be adjustable. Uh, we'll just shake them and see which one's loose. The intake's tight, three's loose. So if, if it, number two is the exhaust, number three's gotta be the opposite, the intake. Then we'll check, yep, exhaust is tight. Intake is loose. Not able to adjust one and four. Both of those are tight. Reason? Uh, well, number four piston, while it's at top dead center, just like its sister over here, number one, it's 360 out of phase in terms of what stroke it's on. So this is on top dead center compression. This is a top dead center of exhaust. Uh, the top dead center of exhaust, both valves are open in what's called an overlap period. So can't do those, but I can do uh, these two, this uh, intake, exhaust, and then I can rotate it uh, 360 degrees to bring this one up on the compression and adjust the remaining valves. Let's get to that. Okay, we're going to demo the procedure um, using the one closest to the camera, mainly just because it's just easier for everyone to see. And this is a um, 3000 clearance uh, specification on the exhaust, which is this side and uh, 2,000 the intake. So here's how we're gonna do the exhaust. I'm gonna insert the feeler gauge from the side and up under. Yeah, that's a little, there we go. And I'm gonna feel the drag on it. See how it feels. It's not too bad. If it needs adjustment, I'm going to just slightly break the tension off of the adjustment lock nut using a screwdriver i'm going to run that tap it screw down just to the contacts and again this is where that feel comes in just to where it comes into contact with that feeler gauge not putting any tension on it i don't want to compress the valve and then we're going to snug that lock nut down and you don't need a lot of tension on this lock uh, lock nut if you put too much on it you're going to actually uh, break the uh, tap it adjusting screw and then you're going to be down waiting to get some replacement parts in. Let me just double check that again. That feels pretty good. Now we can do the exhaust here on number three. And that also feels pretty good. And we'll go ahead and double check that again. And they make a special tool for this where the, the lock nut and screw are in one tool. Personally, I've never used one even when I was a uh, factory wrench for Honda many, many years ago. Okay, and then we'll uh, just snug that down. Put the two tappet covers on. So I know they're done. And we'll finish off by going to the back side of the engine and taking care of the remaining intakes. With all the tappet covers back in place, new O-rings installed if need be, we're just going to snug them down. Now, in our videos, you're going to hear a lot about snug, tight, different terminology like that. Um, and if you've been doing this for any length of time as a mechanic or a technician, you're going to know what those are. You, you will have developed your feel. But when you're starting off and you're not sure, 
there's a torque spec for just about everything on your motorcycle. Get a good shot manual, get a good torque, torque wrench, and torque everything. That way you know you have not exceeded it to the point where you might break something. And you haven't left it so loose that uh, it's going to fall off on you while you're riding down the road. And there we go. That takes care of the valves. Okay, the procedures that we shared today on doing a screw type valve adjustment on this Honda CB750 are very similar to the ones they would use on any engine, motorcycle or car, that uses a screw type adjustment uh, method. Uh, if your engine uses a shim type valve adjustment, uh, while setting up the engine to take the measurements with your feeler gauge and how to use the feeler gauge are very similar to what we showed you here. So you can apply those skills there as well. Uh, if you've never worked on your own stuff again, I certainly encourage you to. It's a lot of fun. But make sure that before you do, you get you a good shop manual, you review the procedures in that shop manual that are specific to your bike, and if need be, get a buddy that has a little more knowledge than you to do it with you so you can get that feel down and you don't make a mistake that's going to cost you a lot of money. All right? Um, hey, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on SVTV How To. Did you enjoy the video you just watched? Did you find it helpful? We sure hope so. If you did, make sure you give us a thumbs up and you add your comments to that section right below the player there. And don't forget to share our videos with your Harley riding friends. Once you got all that taken care of, if you want to make sure that you're the first to know about any new videos that we put up online, hit that subscribe button for us. Thanks for watching.